makes an airport good depends on your needs. Do you care most about on-time departures, short lines at TSA, quality food options? How about a dog to ease your stress? Seriously, this is a thing. But at the Wall Street Journal, we have a system. Each year, we look at 15 metrics, five related to operations, five around value, and five about convenience, including a grade from WSJ readers to determine the best of the country's airports. And by the same metrics, the worst. So which ranked best this year? A few clues. It has a newly rebuilt terminal, a power outlet in each seating unit, and a ton of sunshine, which helps with on-time departures. And yes, it's the one with Duke, the poodle dressed in a John Wayne outfit. Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, which builds itself as America's friendliest airport, took the top spot in this year's ranking and the city's aviation director was delighted to hear it. It's a great uh, testament to our team and all of the investments that uh, we make uh, in our facilities. We want to try to make sure that that uh, passenger experience is as painless as possible and we try to stress customer service day in and day out. Before we get to this year's worst ranked, here's why Sky Harbor was on top. The airport, which placed third last year, excelled in many of the metrics, including short screening waits, a low rate of delays and cancellations, short taxi to takeoff times, and even a low average Uber cost to get from the airport to the convention center. Its biggest jump from last year's rankings, however, was its Wi-Fi speed. Sky Harbor ranked 18th out of the 20 largest airports in Wi-Fi speed last year. Consumers complained. It's now second. Another factor? Average Yelp restaurant ratings improved this year at Sky Harbor, while restaurants at last year's winner, Denver, slipped slightly. Sometimes you get tired of seeing the same national brand in an airport, but here uh, we have some really great local restaurants. Despite its high scores in many categories, Phoenix still scored low in several areas. It ranked 19th in the number of nonstop cities served with a lack of international flights. We would like to see that portfolio of international destinations expanded. More international flights didn't help this year's worst-ranked airport, however. Outdated facilities, flight delays, and poor food reviews once again put Newark at the bottom of the Journal's airport rankings for large airports. The executive director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey wasn't surprised. Well, one thing that one has to recognize is that all three of the Port Authority's airports in customer experience surveys rank at the absolute bottom of the surveys. That is the reality. New York's Kennedy Airport placed only one spot higher at 19th, and LaGuardia took last place in the midsize airport rankings, receiving a grade of D plus from Wall Street Journal readers on average. Focusing on Newark, Domestic fares were second highest on average, lines at TSA averaged the second longest wait, and the airport bottomed out in percentage of flights that landed on time at just 66%. Oh yeah, and the food at Newark was ranked worst among big airports in average Yelp reviews. But the Port Authority is undergoing a massive $24 billion rebuild at all three airports. At Newark, a new Terminal 1 is currently under construction. When completed, the $3 billion facility will replace current Terminal A. They've simply uh, outlived their useful life. Newark Terminal A is almost 50 years old. In the age of technology, in the age of air travel, uh, that's simply unacceptable. Terminal 1 is still about two years out. In the meantime, Newark has upgraded some bathrooms and concessions to respond to customer complaints. Our ambition is to be at the top of the passenger experience surveys. We have our eye at moving from the back of the pack to world class. <laughs>